Today, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're hanging out with my buddy Amy from the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary. This is a Cara Cara. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? You got it. Whew, excellent. Basically, it's a feathered reptile, and we're gonna find out how the sanctuary gets these birds of prey back in the air. As a pro bike rider, action sports announcer, and off-road adventurer, I'm always on the go. But for my true passion as a reptile breeder, I created my own sanctuary in South Florida. This is Camp Kennan. Very excited about today, Amy, because I've been bugging you for so long to play with the birds of prey here at the sanctuary. And we're looking at a caracara, the crested caracara. Yes. And right off the bat, I'm seeing some things with its face that interest me. You know, these very hair-like um, feathers that are on its, just above its beak. Yeah. So, you know, that's usually a telltale sign of what they're adapted to eat, is that right? Got it, exactly right. These guys are carrion eaters, like vultures. Wow. Yeah, so you'll often see them hanging out with a big group of vultures, and they don't have any real dense feathers on their face, or on their legs, or their feet, so that when they are in there, they're not getting dirty. Okay, very cool. No bacteria to hang around on their face, exactly. similar to your vultures, all right, as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, the other thing now about this bird, uh, what's the, you mentioned a, a pretty good thing earlier on about its identity crisis. What do you mean about yes, that? Yes, I always call them the birds identity crisis because they're actually a falcon. Which a lot oh. of people don't realize because they don't really look like a big streamlined, fast flying bird like a peregrine falcon. But they're a falcon because their internal structure is similar, but they behave like a vulture. So right there it's a little odd yeah. and their nickname is the Mexican Eagle because they're the national bird of Mexico. There so you've yeah. got a falcon that's actually called an eagle but behaves like a vulture. A little confusing. Uh, so this bird is found in Mexico. Is this the northernmost range of this bird? These guys actually came over during a hurricane. What? They got blown over this way and now they've naturalized here. So they're not something that's terribly native, but now they've naturalized and the population is actually growing. Oh, that's amazing. All right, very cool. Well, today I'm also going to get my very first yes. Lesson on falconry, and we're gonna. What, what's the term we're about to do? We're gonna hand a bird. Hand right, a bird. right now what we're doing is we're manning the bird. Okay, manning the bird. And what I'm doing is I've got the bird on the fist uh -huh. or on the glove, and I'm actually gonna transfer her over to your glove. Okay. And it's just a matter of getting them when we use them for education, used to being around people. Okay. Yeah, and you can see as, as calm as she is, she's one of our older birds. So there shouldn't be any problem at all. Yeah, I've always loved birds of prey. You know, they they are like dinosaurs. They're just compact dinosaurs. Basically, the feathers are a modified scale. Yeah, so they this are. is pretty cool. And biggest thing is always safety first. So okay. I'm gonna hand you the leash first. Okay. You make sure you hold on to that. I'm holding this. And then as I unclip her, I'm gonna have you clip her to your glove. And you know Where do I clip her? Right along that ring right there. Right here? Yeah. All right. And now so now you've got the leash there. Nope. Oh. Come around this side. Okay. And you're gonna slide right in where my hand is. So you're gonna put your thumb right there. And as you lift up, I'm gonna put my hand down. Ah. Oh, no way. There you go. She's just a little gotta get yeah. comfortable. Perfect. This is sick. There you go. So this is this is definitely a dream of mine because you know you see I used to watch a lot of shows like Beastmaster. Oh, yeah. Remember that? Oh, Mark yes. Singer. <laughs> you gotta look it up, kids. YouTube Beastmaster. He had this like falcon that could see and hunt for him. It was really cool. Anyway, I'm a little bit skinnier than the Beastmaster, but this is pretty amazing to actually be able to hold this bird and to, to work with it. So she does very well, huh? She does great, and it's amazing how light she is. Yeah. You know, a definitely. lot of people, they're like ready and bracing themselves. Yeah. She doesn't even weigh two pounds. No way. No, they can't because they've got hollow bones. That's what keeps them in the air and keeps them flying. If they were heavy, they would be on the ground like the reptiles and the mammals and things. There you go. Good job, beautiful lady. All right, well, I'll tell you what. We'll put her away and sure. I want to go see the flight cage where you guys actually get the birds acclimated to be reintroduced yes. into the wild when they're injured. This is going to be cool. See ya. So, this is our large flight cage. No way. Yeah, isn't it awesome? This is cool. This is our I've birdie gym. Um, if you take a look, this is our large ones. These are our largest birds of prey that are in our rehab program right now. So yeah. you'll notice that there's red-tailed hawks in here, there's bald eagles in here, there's vultures in here. Um, and then we have three others that are smaller for the smaller birds of prey, like the hawks and the smaller eagles, and there are some smaller owls. So these are all animals that have either been hit by cars or have been uh, injured in some capacity. Yeah. This is kind of the final step before we get them back in the wild again. Okay. Yeah. So they may have come in with eye injuries, wing injuries, foot injuries, and we treat them at our hospital. And then we get them out here because we've got to build those muscles back up again. We've got to get them strong enough that we put them in the wild, they're going to be able to catch that food still. They're going to be able to compete with the other animals that have been out there the whole time. How successful are you guys at getting these animals back out? Very successful. Once they've made it to this stage, very successful. 
<laughs> well, who's this charging We're being it interrupted on? here. Uh, this is Uni. She is actually a juvenile bald eagle. Um, she is actually going to be a non-releasable eagle. Okay. She's one we're actually working with our education program. She's telling you her story herself. It's like they're laughing. Oh, isn't that amazing? That is pretty cool. A lot of people don't know that's the bald eagle sound. Really? Yeah, they think it's that high-pitched sound. That's actually a red-tailed hawk that they use in movies. But Get that's their sound. So they're cheating. Yes. See, another thing that the media does, they're cheating the sounds of the red tail and substituting for the bald eagle. So, you know, as far as, you know, you've had some success with these uh, animals, um, what, what is the most problematic thing you run into with birds of prey, getting them rehabbed? Um, I think the hardest thing that we run into is making sure that they can eat on their own and catch food on their own. It's very hard to recreate that in a captive atmosphere. You've got to make sure they can hunt so they can survive out there. That's just kind of difficult, you know, to come up with live prey to get them back out there. And then another thing, like, you know, you have quite a few animals in yes. here. What would be, like, the craziest story that you have as some of these animals getting injured? You know, the ones that, that are crazy to me are the, like, the gunshot wounds. Oh, no. Things like, like that that just, to me, I just can't imagine why somebody would do such a thing. So, wait, they just, sh they, these are protected animals, yes. number one. They're not, they're not yeah. legal to hunt anywhere no. in the United States. You're not even allowed to be in possession of a feather of one of theirs. Wow. without suffering federal offense. So someone just took a shot at them? Yeah, you know, I don't know if, you know, sometimes people think that because it's such a large bird and they do eat things like rabbits and mice, that it's gonna go after their dogs. Oh, or okay. there's been some videos out there where they steal babies, and it's just ridiculous. They're not harpy eagles. Uh, and then, it's out. ridiculous, you know? Yeah. Uh, so people just feel that they need to protect themselves at times. And that's where doing things and educating, which is something that Uni here is gonna be doing, she's gonna be doing education to teach people that that's just not reality. That's that's the media again. Well, you know what? The reality is you guys are doing an awesome job Aww, here at the sanctuary. I love you guys. <laughs> this is cool, man. I got a chance to hang out inside the flight cage. I manned a bird. You did? Uh-huh. My pal, Amy Kite. Yes. You Thank are you a very master much. falconer now? Not quite. No. Not quite. But I love them. And if you want to help out the Bush Wildlife Sanctuary, go to bushwildlife.org. Thanks again. We'll My see you next time on Camp Kennan. Uh, it's time to play with the birds. Thanks so much for watching. And as always, be sure to check out the Camp Kennan channel on YouTube and become a subscriber today.